All right, we got a 1990 Toyota Celica GTS. Uh, it's 5SFE. And we are going to be swapping in three SGTE stuff to make this guy here a little bit happier. So here's the original motor setup. All right, we got parts all over the place. New parts, old parts, old engine. Made it mess. Here's the hole in the car. Alright, let's grab that 3S. Alright, we got the motor in, got the turbo on, uh, we're going to start working on clocking the turbo, uh, but we need to get the rest of the stuff in this car, uh, like the alternator and uh, you know all that other stuff in there where it needs to be at. We're going to try to keep the cruise control in if we can, but uh, it's looking pretty good. We just got done modifying um, the alternator bracket so that way it fits on uh, the head with the nine bolts instead of the seven. So start uh, fitting up this piping. So we need. Well, this is where I'm stopping at for tonight. Um, basically, what we did is turbo has been completely installed. Uh, it's clocked to the position that uh, we're going to leave it at. I think uh, we got some couplers coming to. Uh, start hooking it up at that point. We'll start modifying the turbo housing to accommodate for being clocked uh, We went ahead and installed a factory uh, Heat shield with a factory manifold cast iron manifold uh, Still keeping the three inch downpipe installed uh, basically uh, the tubular manifold over here It looks prettier, but we're not really too interested in using it uh, more things crack. Uh, this is perfectly fine for what we're what he wants for this car. Uh, so, like I showed in the updates before, we have a front mount intercooler right there in the factory grill. Um, right down here, just some tabs welded to the factory uh, bumper support. Turbo's clocked the face down, and it's going to attach to this 90 degree uh, aluminum pipe that connects to the silicone 90 degree uh, through the intercooler. We have another 90 degree silicone coupler uh, with a straight 6 inch and then a um, 90 degree coupler again to a straight. We have 45, 45, a straight. Um, blow off valve is going to be here. Got to fabricate all that stuff still. Uh, this is all for mock up. Uh, like I'll show you here in a little bit uh, when all the parts come in. This will all be TIG welded together with one silicone coupler there to the 90 degree coupler down there. So one piece should look really clean, really nice. Um, but we are waiting on some parts. And uh, as soon as that stuff shows up, there will be an update. Quick little update. Uh, this is the original 5SFE Celica GTS uh, engine harness, body harness uh, out of that car. What I'm doing right now is labeling each individual uh, plug for the sensor um, or whatever it belongs with. So I'm going to label each individual part here, figure out what I need, what I don't need and start uh, breaking the harness down and eliminating things that no longer are required for the 3S GTE and um, start getting this thing prepared for the 3S swap. And here is the harness completely depinned as far as a few things left 
uh, some things down there that I'm not using, and in the pile over here, everything that's got to be reinstalled, uh, wire tucked, and moved. So this is all to use a 5S harness with a 3S motor and keep it somewhat clean. So next step is to slap some uh, fender covers on here and uh, get the fuse box wired up or bolted up and start wiring in what's here. Once this stuff's been installed, then go back to the pile of stuff and one wire at a time figure out the best routing and uh, secure it. I got the fender cover on here protecting the fender that way as I'm routing these wires I can throw them over the fender it doesn't scratch anything up. I uh, made some mounting tabs for the fuse box so that's just mounted to the side of the inner fender well. Um, I got these wires here for the alternator and uh, various plugs they go in the car you know, take this stuff, route it around here, up and under, uh, to keep it out of the way and try to keep it hidden. So uh, that's where I'm at. Try to make this thing as clean as possible. Keep saying that, but that's what I try to do. Uh, keep moving forward. All right, I'm doing a quick video here for this exhaust. Uh, as you can see, there's a bunch of pie cuts we're using to shape the exhaust the way we want to. Um, this is an absolute pain in the butt to do. So, quick little tip is to use uh, masking tape to hold everything in place and that way you can position it the way you want it and then run a couple tack welds down there and it will be a lot more solid and you'll save your arms and a bunch of frustration. So, I'm going to get this tacked up before it falls and uh, show you guys the rest of it. Alright, well I got part of this thing welded up. Uh, here is the part of the pipe that comes off from the downpipe and curves around the oil pan and cross member and everything else so this part's done I have three four five six so welds left on this and I got to install a flex pipe and then the exhaust is complete uh, mufflers hung right where it needs to be at so uh, I gotta finish up welding everything and uh, yeah it's coming out pretty right, good. here's the exhaust completely done all the way up to the back. So just gonna weld a few more things up on the muffler and uh, the exhaust is gonna be in. So got the intercooler piping in that I uh, fabricated up, uh, fully painted, uh, installed. Next thing I got to work on is a uh, wastegate actuator for the turbo. Since I clocked the turbo, the wastegate's in the wrong place. So I'm going to modify this thing and uh, try to figure out a way to get it hooked up to the turbocharger where it actuates the uh, wastegate flap properly. So let's get started. All right, so what I've done here is Here's the bracket for the original wastegate for the CT26. Here's the wastegate itself. I have separated the wastegate from the CT26 OEM bracket. So now I just got to clean up down here. Um, for anybody who needs to do, wants to do this, there's four points where it's been welded onto the actual um, uh, bracket. And then there's uh, six spot welds that you're going to have to drill out on this side. And that is what secures uh, the wastegate actuator cylinder to the bracket. So now I got this off, I can figure out where I want this at and make a new bracket to support it on top possibly. I'm not sure yet, but that's where I'm at. So here's the extender bracket for the wastegate actuator. Uh, got it all welded up, got the spacer in there and uh, going to install the actuator itself now. See how it turns out.
few little specs for that car. Uh, it is a factory 3H GTE. It's got ARP head studs and a Kometic head gasket. Uh, front mount intercooler. It's kind of small, but it should do fine for uh, the goals uh, for this motor. Um, it's a full two and a half inch exhaust, like I showed. Two and a half inch intercooler piping, so there should be, should be plenty of flow. Uh, clocked CT26, and it is running a micro squirt standalone PCM. So uh, I will have a future video on programming that PCM and showing how to do it with a little bit more detail. Uh, and there's a few other videos coming up soon for that car as well as other projects I have going around going on in the shop. So uh, hope to see you guys then.